I sincerely welcome you all to our first ever webinar necessitated by the onslaught of the coronavirus pandemic, also known as COVID-19, presently ravaging the whole world. During the last global pandemic, would named the Spanish influenza in 1918, approximately 100 years ago, more than that anyway, 50 lives, 50 million lives were lost. Globally, COVID-19 has infected 3,798,341 persons with 1,283,477 fatalities. In Nigeria, infection is rising. From one index case in the last week of February 2020, we presently have 2,915 with 98 deaths as at 6th of May, which is yesterday. Those are the ones the former system has tracked. May their souls rest in peace and their families consoled. As if the COVID-19 was not enough, the world went into shock when on April 20th, the price of oil suddenly sunk below zero, with many futures for WTI oil closing at minus $37.63 on 20th, February, 20th April. For the first time in history, producers were willing to pay traders to take oil off their hands. Whereas the Nigeria's 2020 budget was benchmarked at $57 per barrel, even at a bounced back price as of Monday of $36, that is still 40% less than the benchmark price. It means Nigerian, Nigerian government, businesses, citizens, and banks will have to brace up for trying times. COVID-19 pandemic not only poses health issues, but also serious economic issues. Economic conditions are failing in many organizations, globally, as well as in our country. There is an increase in economic uncertainty in almost every household at, at this moment. There is therefore a disruption to all spheres of business and even family etiquettes. All of these factors have come to change almost every aspect of life, from how children are learning to how we physically interact with each other in our daily lives. Do we think handshakes and hugs will still be a norm? The way we get screened in the airport and the way we fly may no longer be the same. In the future, do we not think there will be a lot more of our oversight board meetings that will take place digitally? How are we going to read body language of our colleagues during meet meetings when Zoom becomes the norm? How are we going to tap someone on the shoulder to emphasize the gravity of our point? It is clear that we're entering a new normal that's going to change almost every aspect of life as we knew it. The objectives of this program are one, to equip us with the requisite knowledge and soft skills to move on. Two, to remind us of the protocols of sustainability in business. The above will help us to anticipate what management will be presenting to us to make the appropriate strategic decisions that will take our organizations to new heights. Finding success in adversity for many is the fuel to keep going, going on in order to reach higher. In fact, in the history of the world, global pandemics 
and world wars created long periods of hardship and adversity. But in those hardships come the true text of leadership, ingenuity, and resilience. The organizations that are able to adapt and pivot their value propositions to customers have the opportunity to capture new customers and market share. The window for a big reset opens up, and this is what one might expect to happen globally as we navigate our respective organizations' responses. As the boundaries between home and work continue to blur as a result of the lockdown, our relationship skills at home with our family, as well as our relationship skills with coworkers and colleagues must evolve and get even stronger despite the distance and boundaries among stakeholders. More than ever, the demand to learn new skills and be able to learn, and be able to listen, connect, and influence will become critical. Are we all going to be able to adapt and pick up these new skills or be left behind? It is also clear that the social economic impact of the virus, as well as the nation's economic crisis, will be felt long after the virus has been subdued. This is not likely to be a short sprint, but a marathon. What are we going to do in our respective organizations to brace up for the rough ride? While ensuring that customer sentiment stays positive and shareholders' value is protected, our ability to implement our business continuity plan and our preparedness for the future we determine institutions that will come out on top after the pandemic and economic recovery. The essence of this session is to equip the board by providing one, board and stakeholders the relevant information to remain in business during and after the pandemic. Two, information to bank boards on what to look out for from the risk management perspectives during and after the pandemic. Three, the agility that bank directors require through education. That is learning, unlearning, and relearning. So let me at this point reiterate the importance of an association like BIDAN, which is the umbrella body for bank directors executives and non-executives in Nigeria. BDAM focuses principally on the issues, challenges, and opportunities of bank directors through their institutions. To accomplish this, we have eminent and competent personalities, namely Professor Chris Ogbeche, Mrs. Fumi Oyetunji, and Dr. Jude Moyen as the panelist, while Dr. Lucy Newman is the moderator. To do justice to our topic, the bank board's role during the pandemic. Thank you while you're listening, and we will also expect your contributions. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President, and uh, good morning, our distinguished directors who have logged in for this uh, wonderful webinar. Uh, Madam President, as we all know, is um, Mrs. Osarechin Demuren. She's the president of Bank Directors Association of Nigeria, and she's also the chairman of the board of Guarantee Trust Bank, PLC. This morning, we're going to have a very interesting conversation and we hope that as many as have logged on will participate. My role as the moderator is to guide the questions and answer sessions and I will also walk us through the platform. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you will see a tab for Q&A. 
as the sessions proceed, you are free to go in there and type in questions that you would want the panelists to respond to. To make our work very easy, please be as explicit as possible and if possible, name the specific panelists that you would like to respond to that question. The names of the panelists are shown on their respective screens. Then there's also the chat tab. In the chat tab, as the conversations are going on, you can participate by posting in any comment you have. I will, as the moderator, keep tab of the postings in those chats and bring it into the conversation as much as possible. And there's also a tab for raising hands. Because of time constraints, we will not enable that raising hands tab, but you can just participate in the Q&A and in the chat. So how are we going to proceed this morning? Based on the address that Madam President has given, we're going to have three layers of conversations. The first layer of conversation is just to scope for us, what is this new normal that we have, the pandemic situation? We all know, if there's anything that Bida wants us to work away with, is the saying by Jack Cranfield, is a quote that says, don't just sit there, do something. It's so apt that even during a pandemic, the board has a role to play and we need to keep working at it. So therefore, two aspects, a key aspect of our um, principle for Nigerian Corporate Governance Code 2018 that this panel will be discussing within that context is principle one, which says that a successful company is headed by an effective board, which is responsible for providing entrepreneurial and strategic leadership as well as promoting ethical culture and responsible corporate citizenship as a link between stakeholders and the company. And the board is to exercise oversight and control to ensure that management acts in the best interest of the stakeholders and other stakeholders while sustaining the prosperity of the organization. We all know that in the business of mediation, mobilization and allocation and deployment of resources and accountability, the financial services sector sits in the middle of that. And when things are not really working, <laughs> the financial institutions, especially banks, are in the middle of it all. We can all tell earlier this week when the lockdown was eased, May 4th, there were a lot of things reported about what had happened at our respective branches. So we hope that this morning as we proceed, First layer of questions will be, what is the new normal, the pandemic was the situation. The second layer of questions will be decisions, given that it's all about bank directors on the board, the role of board banks in uh, bank boards in the macro system. Then just to give us a sense of what Madam President had said about what do we do from this session, is looking forward the past post pandemic, what is going to be happening. So as she had already introduced our panelists, we'll go into the Q&A session, the first layer of questions. Professor Beche, good corporate governance practice is vital, we all know, to corporate sustainability and competitive corporate brand position in the long, medium, and long term. And the long term. So the role of the board is to provide oversight and do that even in the crisis time, like a pandemic. Prof. Based on your role, at the you please share insights on how you think COVID-19 will generally impact corporate strategic decisions and how you specifically advise bank boards to approach strategy even the pandemic? Thank you very much, Lucy. And I welcome all participants to this interesting panel discussion. Let me start by saying that strategy is not developed in a vacuum. There's always a context. And so I would like to start by painting a brief picture of this context. And Madam President has actually tried to also paint that picture because we are witnessing the awakening of what are called a new order. Working from home, video conferences will now be entrenched. E-commerce and online payment will actually increase their penetration. And we will not be surprised if governments even embrace e-services. Low oil prices will have adverse impact on oil and gas sectors, 
public sector will lead to drop in federal and state government revenues and expenditure and will even spill over to construction. And for us in the banking industry, potential increase in non-performing loans because a lot of the loans will be challenged. This is the environment that banks will be operating in in the near future that has come about because of the pandemic. So the main object, your main objective of the board at this time is not just for the bank to survive. I think we should go beyond agenda of survival to agenda of thriving. Boards at this time should guide their banks through this unprecedented uncertainty. So this is a time for board directors to leverage their experience, their professional network, and industry understanding to outline how their bank's future, future vision, strategy, and corresponding operating model we need to change in this post-pandemic era because the pandemic will work with manage with management team to develop two, three, even four scenarios of the future arising from what's happening to us now, and then embark on the development scenario. Don't develop one strategy. For each scenario, develop a strategy that will enable you to it. But now, start watching the trends to know which of these scenarios is likely to play out. And the board has to work with management to agree on a new vision of the future and think of the big, what are called thematic ideas that will guide the bank strategic response. This is a time for all the competencies of the, on the board to come around and operate at full steam to ensure that balanced approach is adopted at all times. Because to manage the crisis of this magnitude successfully, boards need to help management balance short-term priorities, which will be pressing, with long-term goals, which could lead to the survival of the bank in the future. So to me, the board should play an active role also in stakeholder engagement. So ease management a bit and help management to actively engage with stakeholders and shareholders and other stakeholders. This is time to have conversation. Many of them are worried what's going to happen to our bank, what's going to happen to the future, and also conversation with other key stakeholders. The bank director should act at this time as both sparing partners and empathic counselors to management. This is time for candid advice and personal support for them. And the board should also closely monitor how non-competitors and potential competitors that we are not aware of today are evolving and where they should be invested. But most importantly, this is the time for, the, for us to reinforce the culture of the bank. These are the strategic moves I think banks should be making at this time. Over to you, Joseph. Thank you very much, Prof. I think you've just about set the tone. Mrs. Zoe Tunji. Um, you have a very, very rich background in financial services, especially board risk management, international board dynamics, and you're also the Bidan vice president. Many banks in Nigeria are either finance, uh, franchises of international boards, brands, or home office of international subsidiaries. I recall that when Ebola struck <laughs> in uh, time past, many banks with locations across West African sub-region had to rethink in terms of operations risk and compliance. In view of COVID-19, as Prof has laid out and as Madam President has laid out, can you share your insights on the risks that banks are likely to face at this time and how the bank board can best support management through its risk management oversight at this time? Um, good morning, and thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator. Thank you very much, uh, the President, for laying that very wide background uh, from your experience, which is useful to all, all listening. 
Um, by the way, I sit on the board of Ecobank Nigeria and I chair the start uh, from the international perspective and regional perspective that you have uh, mentioned. The unfortunate situation that we face, which makes it very different from Ebola, is the fact that the whole world is actually in this problem, rather than uh, a region which can then look for support from other regions. So what makes this even more critical is the fact that you're managing your region. Every region is managing its own risks. And um, if we are not careful, there will be contagion even between regions. So that, that makes it, I want to paint that picture so that people know that you are not likely to get much help from either a parent company. You can imagine if your parent company was American, you know, either a parent company or other regions because they are battling their own situation. So this, this makes it even more critical for, for all of us. But let, let me just go straight into what I think uh, in, from, from a risk point of view. I like what you said about um, in the end, our role remains with that of oversight. Uh, whether you're non-executive, mostly from the non-executive, the, the executive will be management. They will also wear the heart of management. But for directors that are directors who are not managers, um, it is important at this time that we understand that no matter how difficult this time is, we must remain our over, we, we must retain our oversight role and be very careful not to stand in the way of uh, management at this time by becoming too fiddly. Having said that, that oversight role now goes beyond our quarterly meetings. It will just not be enough because uh, communication becomes important at this time. And uh, yes, management can use our help in terms of constantly being a sounding board and uh, us oversighting, uh, 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 retaining an oversight rule as to what they're doing and being confident that they are doing, they're going in the right direction. So communication becomes basic and critical now. So while we're not fiddling too much, we must make sure that we get constant facts that help our oversight rule and, know, and help us know what is going on and advise where we need to advise. Beyond communication, the, you need to be looking at the crisis uh, response uh, plans at this time. This is one of the ways that we can use communication uh, to help management. There will be a crisis response plan. Unfortunately, that plan could change from week to week. So we need to keep an eye on it for, for, for it to work and for it to change as necessary. So let me now, now go to the risk management uh, area properly. So what, what kind of, these risks are, have always been there. You know, when you talk about risks in, in banks, you talk about liquidity, you talk about uh, market risk. But all of a sudden, the mitigation of those risks have changed and the need for mitigation of those risks have changed and some risks have become like must become top of the mind more than uh, some other ones and i want to talk about three or four risks as different from just looking at the normal risk that we look at so that uh, when we consider them we can be serious about the first one is liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. At this time, uh, it is important that the liquidity risk is constantly overseen, managed, and mitigated against. If you need, I know banks that now have daily alcohols, and that is because when a bank um, cannot manage its liquidity risk, it's dead in the water, especially in these times. So I would. Um, advise bank directors to not shift their eyes from the liquidity risks that are faced by the bank. Some of it was there before, but I promise you it's probably been made worse at this time. I won't go into details. The other risk that we have to be watching at this time 
is our revenue risk. No matter what the business, but mostly banks, there, there's going to be a revenue risk because our customers have more problems than, than, than they had before. So the loan book risk and uh, the revenue that we can derive from our assets uh, is, is a line of risk that we need to manage and ensure that there's proper mitigation against. Uh, the other risk is, which is very important at this time, is technology. Those technology controls were not created to deal with moments like this, when the passage of transactions have become fast and situations are changing all the time. It was not built for remote working. You know, most of our staff working from home. So a lot of the things that are happening now just because of this problem were not situations considered when some of those controls were put in place. So we need to basically watch our technology risks at this time, see what the emerging risks are, move as much as possible to mitigate them and, and be careful uh, that they do not create uh, problems going forward. Thank you very much, um, Lucy. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yetunji. Dr. Moye, <laughs> in view of your experience and academic works <laughs> in the area, you have a good appreciation of hearts and minds of categories of bank customers, especially in Nigeria, especially in Nigeria and other parts of Africa. You also have an appreciation of how banks in Nigeria and the rest of Africa have had to deal with business continuity, leveraging on experiences with public health challenges like the Lassa fever, Ebola, which are actually sub-regional locally to us, not global, as Ms. Oetwinji has said, and as uh, the issue of terrorism, which seems to be global. Now, looking at COVID-19 pandemic, can you share insights on likely operational and um, crisis management maneuvers that executive directors will have to consider and bring to the full board for prompt, applicable, strategic, and operational decisions as part of board's oversight role, as clearly listed by Mrs. Oye Tunji. Thank you, Dr. Lucy Newman, our moderator. Um, the board generally at this point um, will be looking at operational issues much more than they were looking at it before and uh, as well as strategic uh, issues as far as the operations of the banks are concerned and um, i would say here that those at the center of riding the curve of this pandemic are the executive the executives the executive directors and the and the, and the ceo now what would they be presenting to their board because in riding the curve of this pandemic, a whole lot of things are brought to fore. So it is the duty of the executive that is managing to bring this on uh, to the board. So the trust of executive presentation um, at this point would be um, first to update the board on the assessment on an ongoing basis, whether its contingency plans are still accurate accurate in response to disruption through his business continuity plan. And at this point, the board should be asking, uh, did we really have, but take it or leave it, some people didn't have BCP, didn't have business continuity. They didn't have it existing. So the board will be looking at, we didn't really have this, or did we really have this? And if we have, was it triggered? And if it was triggered, was it functional? And if it was functional, what were the gaps noted so that policy formulation and amendments could be made to them. Now, we'll also be ensuring that our digital payment systems and remote workings align with the business goals because they're original business goals that the board had actually approved. So looking at how robust outcome of the triggered BCP, ensuring continuity and determining whether the monitoring and reporting protocols are in place for the next disaster. Uh, obviously, there's gonna be a next disaster. Today, it is pandemic. Tomorrow, it might be climate change. So that has to ensure that there is 
continuing uh, or a continuous BCP that the banks uh, would have. Again, the board also needs to be updated on how demands for its products or its services are likely to be impacted during and after the pandemic and to evaluate the bank's requirement and commitments to its suppliers and customers. The executive should be bringing on to the board what the opportunities are today, because if you look at the Chinese character of describing crisis, is two characters. One is danger, the other one is opportunity. So you can just bring only danger to the board. You also bring the opportunities. So what are the opportunities that we have in collaborating and take, to take advantage of all palliative measures that the government have put in place today. Then the next would be the issue for me, the tough choices that the board has to make because the executive are there riding the curve of this pandemic. Then these choices are to be made and is brought to the board. And what are these choices? Should we have increased digital assets and work from home or increase our internal control and be liberal traditional? These are choices that we have to make. Should we look at the safety climate in terms of the health and welfare of workforce versus cost reduction, probability, and business continuity issues? The next to be huge credit exposure and deteriorating portfolio versus can we cut our higher credit losses right off and then move on? Automation or a combination of persons and automation. So these are the hard choices that the board will be making. There, there is this aspect of the critical element of people, of people management. Querying the internal and external environment as far as safety is concerned, both the employee as well as your customers. Cost containment and reduction of costs with respect to workforce, the number, vendors, location, investment in technology, and then leveraging renewable energy. It could even go as far as rationalization of staff, compensation as we migrate to the digital platform and AI world. The key customer areas and care engagement plans that we have are brought to the board to ensure the ease of access to financial services platforms and the ease of assessing our banking hall. Looking at banking halls today is not like the way we entered four, five, six months ago. Entering the banking hall today is different. So those issues are brought up and policy amendments. Banks, ordinarily, you don't use electronic signature every day. But today, a whole lot of us use electronic signature. So the policies that guide this had to be amended and then worked out. Uh, before I wrap up on this, I think I have to talk about also resource allocation. It has to be done with transformation mindset, with transformation mindset in building agility of leaders for speed, for identification and response capacity. The structure and the systems that we have today, we have looked at it, has to be agile. It has to be fluid for quick adaptation and decentralizing authority to uh, uh, of uh, business managers so that they could interface properly with customers and take very informed decision, problem solving and support innovation as well as creative thinking. The entire services has to be reset totally. The work ethics, the business operation, the econometric hours and work flexibility. So we have to communicate all these to the board so that operational issues and strategic issues are taken care of. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Moye. Wow, we're getting down to the real not nitty gritty issues. Thank you very much. I just observed that nobody has typed anything in the chat section. Perhaps we're so much engrossed in the conversations, which is also very good. But let's not forget to share our views and participate in this discussion. I also observed that we don't have any question as yet yet. So we're good on time. Now we're going to go to the second round of questions, if we remember. Now we've just set the context clearly in the situation. The next issue is, it's all about decision-making for boards. What is the role of board, uh, bank boards in the macro system? So to get us on that, Professor Beche, 
extending your responses in round one when we scope the entire situation of the pandemic and the need to keep on thinking strategy. Um, in terms of the new normal, what strategic roles would you advise that bank boards consider for their banks in the larger ecosystem? We've dealt with a lot of the internal issue. Now we're looking at the larger ecosystem to fight against this global uh, the pandemic for the medium to long-term strategic impact and goodwill, given that financial services are all about trust as well as brand positioning. Position and image in, in the future. But I also feel that this is the time, if we're going to tackle this effectively and position ourselves for the future, to ensure that the board is well constituted. Let's review the makeup of our boards in terms of knowledge, experience, and diversity. This is a time to ensure that within the board, we have the following skills. Risk management, technology, innovation, strategy, marketing and branding, change management, and of course, sustainability. And at the same time, I'm saying that the board should miss more often. I also believe that this is the time for smaller boards, not very large boards, boards that will have better qualified people and not necessarily political or social directors. And if that is put in place, thing for us, the next thing is that we must put the health and safety of staff and customers first, because they are part of that ecosystem. So in this era, anybody can fall sick. We don't know, they say COVID-19 does not know status. It is time for the board to insist that we have an established, clear succession and leadership contingency plan, because it's critical now. But the board should also, at every meeting, devote at least 25% of its time to discuss forward-looking strategic issues. The temptation is that we might be firefighting all the time because the board's rule now makes it well positioned to ensure that the key lessons from the current crisis are captured, synthesized for us to be able to address such disruptions in the future. We also have to take, the board should insist now that the bank takes necessary action during this crisis to help build trust and reinforce the brand values. For example, granting moratorium to some of their debtors, particularly MSMEs. This is the time for the board to ensure that the bank, as a way of managing the ecosystem and brand position, set up advisory support team to assist customers who are almost in distress. Because many of them are confused, they don't know what to do. So we, as a bank, can actually help them navigate this. This is the time again for us to now have a clearly defined digital strategy. Because going digital is the game and this will help customers to make better decisions, will help customers to stay safer because they will no longer be coming to the bank more often. But we need to drive the bank to build new experiences to help customers manage debt, adjust budgets, and make full use of any government support programs that may come their way. So my last point before I cede my time is that the board should encourage management to develop new products and services for customers that are in distress. So over to you, Lucy. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much. Thank you. And before I call Mrs. Oetunji, we have a few chats in the chat section, which I would like to recognize. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Akonji, I call her Auntie Molly. She says, the summary from Mrs. Oetunji resonated with me, which is effective communication and not to stand in the way of management. She said, Dr. Moye talked about agile system. That is what drives change management in a crisis period. The board must have an arrowhead in these areas. And we have a comment from Mrs. Irene Nepima. They're excellent. I'm very pleased to say that the board and management of First Bank is on the right track. 
<laughs> there will be a lot of advertisement. <laughs> Listening to the panelists has just confirmed this. Thank you for this insight. Bidan, I'm the one that added Bidan. So now we we'll go to Hetunji. <laughs> Thank you for all these comments. Mrs. Oetunji, extending your response in round one of our discussion here today, and in terms of how the new normal as applicable to board risk, board support to management in its oversight function, how can regulatory agencies within the financial services in Nigeria, and also even including so regionally, given what you've said in, in the global mix and um, continentally, support bank boards to effectively play strategic roles advised by Professor Bechi. Because we now have participants even from international subsidiaries of Nigerian banks and other banks in Africa participating here today. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Newman. Um, I'm pleased that you have brought in regulators because it's, it's my, it's my, it's, it's one of the areas of being on a, a bank board that, uh, let me just go straight into it. The participation of regulators can either minimize or increase the risks of banks. Um, you are regulated and your risk can be minimized if your regulator understands your plight, deals with you from the point of view of macro effect, but also considering your own strategic risk. And so it can increase or, or, or minimize. In terms of risk um, regulators across the region, I, before, before I even talk about regulators, BDAN is not a regulator. And I believe that uh, bodies that bring people to the table to discuss their issues will always be useful in terms of uh, strengthening, because you did mention about strengthening board directors. And one of the objectives of BIDAN is actually the strengthening of board uh, directors to carry out their roles. So across the region, what will be good is if regulators across the continent, across the region, were to be able to meet to synchronize their regulatory intentions. Because then they would have to look at the problems and the opportunities that face the banks in their spaces, either on a sovereign basis, or on a regional basis, or a continental basis. And if there is that kind of uh, synchronization, then it, it, it helps banks, it helps uh, bank directors. I would also suggest that one of the ways regulators can help bank directors Beyond training, now and again you see uh, regulator-based trainings, is to actually efficiently engage the directors, effectively engage the directors. I know that we have the bank, uh, bankers committee. Uh, Non-executives are not part of this. So I will suggest um, that regulators actually get, find a way of engaging, of letting non-executives understand the direction of regulation and how it can help in their role as directors to ensure that um, effective regulation happens and that they have a proper understanding of why some regulation is happening. You know, I, I talked about the risks that it can maximize or minimize risk. And in my first round, I did mention the risks that face, that can or face banks more sternly today. And I talked about strategic risk in terms of revenue risks and liquidity risks. I said, those are important. Uh, without becoming unduly, because we are regulated, I can imagine that all the banks in the system at the moment, through regulation, because of regulation, actually do have those risks um, enlarged or made bigger. We, it's not a secret. 
we are regulated in, in terms of CRR. We've just been told that uh, the management of our costs uh, cannot really happen uh, because of the people's cost. So when you look at that, I don't know if banks don't, well, I know that each bank knows that its liquidity risk has just been affected by those regulations, that its uh, revenue and cost optimization risk has just been affected, which becomes strategic. So I would ask that regulators consider the risk. The, the, the strategic risk I would like regulators to consider mostly is that a lot of banks at this point might be looking for capital. And those who bring capital to the table look at the risks that face the institutions. And where they see those risks as strategic, it might be a difficult thing for uh, uh, um, uh, capital, new capital to come into the system. Finally, I would advise board members, bank boards. I love the example of Professor Bichu when he talks about his SWOT team. He was talking about management and within company SWOT team. I would suggest, suggest a SWOT team, industry, wide SWOT team that will get together, think about the risks that face them, and properly engage the regulators from this end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Etuji. <laughs> Thank you very much. And as if you read one of the comments there from uh, Mr. Austin Madu, too, he said, I was going to ask about balancing executive over zealousness with middle summness of non executive. The suggestion of a SWAT team may be helpful. Any other ideas? There will be a lot of ideas through this session. So we are going to proceed to Dr. Moy. We have a couple of comments, but I would I'll take them after Dr. Moye has answered his question. Dr. Moye, extending your responses in round one of our discussion in terms of the new normal, how can other stakeholders, Mizu Etunji dealt with the regulatory issue, how can other stakeholders in the governance equation, that's our shareholders, tax authorities, uh, customers, and uh, so, uh, all of them support bank boards through this uh, pandemic. Some people are saying the shareholders say they don't want any excuse, they want their dividends. Some others are saying different kinds of things. Can you just give us an idea on what to, how to get them to support banks? Um, thank you again, uh, moderator. Uh, I think I will start by saying that um, there should be continuous engagement continuous engagement with all stakeholders in navigating this whole um, uh, uh, curve. Um, before we go into the specifics, I, I would say that stakeholders should take cognizance of certain uh, facts. First is knowing that strategy, strategy is going to change or is changing. There are scenario building that the bank board or the executive has brought up to the bank for adoption in continuous readjustment of their scenario plans, which has to align with the trend of crisis, creating multiple scenarios that form strategy for quick and appropriate response. So this may not yield immediate value. You're looking at your best case, you're looking at your worst cases, you're looking at your expected case. Now, I also mentioned the agility of business, that the, the, the board, the management at this point of creating uh, areas of new markets, new products, new customers even emerging, and focusing on value proposition and how to recast the business model. Institutionalizing the decisions and capabilities that the, 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 the bank took during the, the, the pandemic on its own, and also the shrinking value in the balance sheet and the flow of liquidity. Mrs. Oritunji dealt with liquidity risk issue. So the, flow, the interest rate today is tending to zero on, 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 on deposits. So the, the balance sheet of banks are at a very structural competitive disadvantage as it stands today. And then looking at risk management issues, which she also spoke about, um, in terms of the impairment of portfolio quality, there is obviously going to be changes in the risk profile of borrowers and bank portfolios. 
this crisis presents what we call a rapid change and opportunity for bad actors in the industry. So the board will be abreast with the knowledge and experience of complex risk management models so that we can calibrate and recalibrate in terms of our expected loss before the value begins to come. The, 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 the increased uh, societal scrutiny, which has to do with sustainability, because the board will be looking beyond ourselves, our bank, now to what the shared value, how it can be a common wealth of everyone. The banks will not be creating value that will affect everyone and every part of the stakeholder. The go congruence issues, which have been reviewed. Some of our CEOs and executives, we are very optimistic in setting up our performance and budget indicators. But at this time, the expectation, expectation may not be in that direction. That's why you have the board to moderate these uh, expectations. And then issues like profit warning, we, the stakeholders have to understand profit warnings have to come. Performance notification will also come, especially for publicly quoted uh, entities. Now, going to the specifics for the tax authorities, what would they be doing? I will advocate tax relief to banks to cushion the effect of the pandemic, especially on our operations. Tax breaks or concession that could uh, be important to also boost the economy and reduce corporate taxes from the banks, maybe in the interim. Now, for the shareholders, they may be expecting a kind of robust performance, like I said, or dividend. But at this time, all hands must be on deck to strengthen the institutions. So shareholders will need to support the business to ensure capital retention. In fact, the inflow of fresh capital is necessary at this point, like Mr. Yetunji also noted. Flexibility in shareholders' expectation mm -hmm. is also very important at, at, at this point. So looking at the customers, the customers may have to understand with the delays that they have to face in response to their transaction because some of the platforms we're using, some of the digital platforms we're using, we're not used to it. So there has to be, there will be some teething problems. There will be some delays in our services, not as it used to be before. And sometimes also, we've also put in place things like self-service. Some people may not know how to operate. So it has to take some education. It has to take time for them to know how we can support them. The customer willingness to also show a level of understanding that at this point, a lot of banks are going to be uh, engaging in all forms of digital banking, digital solution, re-engineering, even building of AIs, you know, that can drive uh, our businesses. Mm -hmm. So the customer will likely support the bank at this time that will emerge in this economic climate and looks as usual as possible. So every customer is looking at their, cost, at their bank, which bank is going to emerge strong even with all this that is happening today. So they want to associate, they want to understand with that bank and say, this is where we should be and give our support. So customer loyalty to their bank of choice will eventually help in reducing what I may call a bank run. But if you can see what is happening now, everybody going to the bank, they want to draw their money. They're not interested. The platforms are working. The, 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 they can make transfer from their hand devices or from any form of device. The ATMs are working, but they all want to go into the banking hall. But access to this banking hall is not like before. So they just have to understand that this is the new normal. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dr. Moye. <laughs> We're about to, we actually wrapped up on the first two rounds, and I would like to take a few comments before we go to the final lap. <laughs> we have a comment from um, Mr. Um, Mr. Ife Sekibo. He said, Professor mentioned sparing partners, <laughs> context of which I believe is cooperation of all members of the board as against we versus them based on trust. Uh, Dr. Akonji also said, we have been mentioning technology, technology. Can we just highlight the rising rate of cyber attacks globally? <laughs> so maybe we'll take that in our wrap-up comment. Then uh, Olushola Oworu, Mr. Oh, Mrs. Oworu said, excellent suggestion, Mrs. Oyetuji, on the engagement of the regulators with bank directors. Regulatory risk is now the topmost concern of the banks today. 
this cannot be overemphasized. I'm sure they will echo that. Then say Fese Kibo said another one. He said regulatory advice and compliance in a fast changing climate. Can you discuss the role of the full board given that implementation period may be short? So we'll take it, but now we're going to the last round of questions and then before we have the wrap up by the moderator uh, with the panelists. Looking forward, post the pandemic, the disruption has brought about the best and the worst in leadership and resilience of systems as well as institutions. Many optimists see the pandemic as a reset to a new normal, as we've all heard from the panelists. Some of the things that every bank board would learn during this crisis include the strength of its culture, as Prof had mentioned, resilience of its business continuity, as Ms. Zoe Tunje has told us about the risk, and the extent of its corporate goodwill as a corporate citizen, as Dr. Moya had said. Therefore, looking into the future, Professor Obeche, how do you foresee the banking system at home and across Africa changing post COVID-19 and indeed the world. How do you advise that bank boards prepare for and leverage this emerging scenario for better impact and value add? Thank you very much. Unfortunately, Africa will experience an economic contraction, reduce foreign direct investment and still mobility issues. And that will also affect the banking industry. Travel bans and lockdowns will drive online and digital activities the more. And the banking system in Africa will be highly challenged. But it's nice, that's, it's not all bad news. However, Banks will be expected in almost all African countries to help solve the problems and trigger economic growth. It's not the government, they'll be looking up to the banks. Let's not forget that MSMEs and, the, and informal businesses are the main drivers of Africa's economy. And as such, in the future, banks must play a significant role in supporting them. I know these are the ones that don't even have uh, the, the right books and everything, but how do we help them? Because this will be the, 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 the driving engine of economic growth for Africa. Banks must stay reachable and must treat customers with empathy in all their personal inter interactions. This is part of our African culture because that is the way we always relate with friends, with colleagues, with family members. I think again, this is the time across Africa for banks and the boards must help drive a clearly defined, again, digital strategy that can be scaled up within a short time with an eye on cyber risk. Fortunately, Africa has a young population and these young ones are digital natives. They are not digital aliens like us. And so we must help customers go digital and remote right now. This is the time going forward for banks to think of strategic partnerships with customers, could be supermarket chain, with IT providers, with even with fintechs. Don't see fintechs as competitors. Corporate, collaborate with them. But banks must ensure that both will ensure that their banks build agility and resilience for effective performance in this new emerging scenario. On a happy note, I think both should be on the lookout for interesting acquisitions or mergers during this period. This is also the time for banks to demonstrate care about the communities in which they do business. This is also the time across Africa for banks to commit to ethical principles because this could be a competitive advantage. Time to operate within the bounds of law and regulation. But let me, my last comment is that ingenuity, not financial muscles, will become a source of advantage for banks across Africa post-COVID. 
Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Oyetunji, what do you foresee a shift? You know, these things are prof listed. <laughs> Obviously, we need to change the way we think. What do you think is the required mentorship by board members to build resilience of their banks, you know, given the risk issues you listed, and thrive post-COVID-19? Especially, address the roles of the board company secretary, the board chairman, other directors in the changing order of things as applicable to risk mitigation. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Newman. When all of this started, the first thing everybody wanted to claim is that it all can be described as a black swan occurrence. What is a black swan occurrence? It is something that is not likely to happen. It's rare. Um, its impact is great, okay? and um, you're not likely to have been able to predict, okay? That's definition of a black swan. So the first thing all businesses wanted to believe was that this is a black swan. But a few people have come out and say, really, black swan? Apart from the impact because of the fatality, um, but if you were to have stayed on your risk management platform, very well. If you had listened since 2015 when people have been talking about pandemics, so nobody thought it would become the closeness, you know, they would close global skies for this long. Nobody thought. But a pandemic was on the table. Okay? People were talking about there going to be a pandemic. So for the board, um, you know, leaders in business, what we used to, the new norm is that what could have been termed a black swan would no longer be a black swan. Because the possibility of things like this happening has just been declared to us. The connectivity of the world has also just been shown to us. We, we, we would usually have wanted to manage our risks in cyclones, but we have now seen that risk could be totally global, okay? And so in managing our banks, who would have thought that in Nigeria, in managing a bank, COVID-19 will happen at the same time as slumping oil? And I would say at the same time as what I now refer to as pre-existing condition, both at the sovereign <laughs> level and industry level. So, <laughs> you know, talking about pre-existing conditions, they talk about it with humans. But when you also have conditions that the sovereign conditions, the industry conditions that were there, and all it needed was for a COVID-19 and, and um, uh, slump uh, in oil prices to happen at the same time, and then it becomes a disaster. So I think this is the time that the, the, the bank boards and leaders in business generally should begin to understand that the new norm makes connectivity, makes impact, you know, can become existential problems all of a sudden. So we need to have that mind shift. Somebody, I think one of the panelists had said also that this is a point where bank boards begin to think about recruitment and appointments as a strategic advantage. It's become important. It, it, the evidence that, that is shown is that if a bank were to have the wide uh, range of skills and efficiencies on their board, apart from executives, then tackling such problems become easier and uh, to deal with and to manage. So I believe that boards should have this mind shift of we are trying to make our boards stronger by the skill sets that are on our boards and by the management, risk management. Peripheral risks have become important. It's not just risk in your own area. It's peripheral. It can come from anywhere. It came from China and landed here. So 
we need to pay attention to peripheral risks also. Uh, talking about role of the chairman, the uh, company secretary and directors, those statutory rules have always been stipulated, but sometimes it's reduced in terms of how we use the strength. For uh, the board, I believe at this moment, the, the, the synchronization of the roles of the chairman and company secretary and the importance of the company secretary in keeping the board together, keeping the board informed and in brackets, managing the chairman to ensure that it works is important. We've given the example of more communication. Who makes communication happen? It's usually the company secretary. And if you've ever seen, and I, I have experienced a very good company secretary, a chairman, a, a, a board chairman will tell you the import, importance of a company secretary that manages them well, reminds them of things, you know, brings things to, bring things to the fore. So I believe that, that uh, role, those two roles can benefit a board of course, the support and you know contribution of other directors also. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Oyetunjili. Before I call Dr. Moye, there's some interesting comments here which I will take, given that we have a little bit of time. Mr. Um, Ifeseki said, regulatory advice and compliance in a fast-changing climate like Mrs. Oyetunjili has described it. Can you discuss the role? I think what Ms. Oetunji just said, you answered Mr. Sekibo's question. Then we have a view from a regulator, you know, Mr. Olawale Oyeleke. He said, we currently have a system of meeting with NEDs for discussions when we embark on risk-based provision examinations. And as part of the process, engage the key NEDs. However, the point made by Ms. Oetunji is noted. That is from Central Bank. And then we have somebody who said, good morning all, this is Samuel Duro Jaye, NED with Wemo Bank. Good morning, sir, good to have you here. Then we have another one, another additional comment by Oyeleke says that we currently have a system, which is the one that we've read before. Uh, Mrs. Akonji said, regulatory issues <laughs> are synchronized globally by the Basel uh, regime. But when regulation become micromanagement rather than macromanagement. This is the time regulators should, <laughs> Ms. Oetuji has a beaming smile on this comment. This is the time regulators should review their modern monetary policy, especially MP3. <laughs> so another comment says, considering economic downturn and projections of increased MPL, is it not time for CBN to review the 65% low funding ratio and the AMCO levy to create more liquidity within the system? So now I'm going to call you Dr. Moye. I guess I've given the panelists something to think about before I call Dr. Moye and then we'll get into our wrap up session. Dr. Moye, <laughs> what would you advocate as the role of regulators and shareholders in terms of their expectation in facilitating the emerging chain, medium to benefit of all stakeholders. I know you said something like that, so I guess your response is going to be very short. But I think the responses from CBN and all the posts and the chats that I read actually gave you some context to just wrap it up for us. Thank well, you. And thank you again, um, Dr. Lucy Newman. And straight to the point. For the regulators, what would be what will I advocate for as a role? They, they have their statute, statutory role, but I would also like to say that um, regulators should be they 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 should be because bank don't even have one regulator now. We have, they have regulators. They should be more proactive. They should show that proactiveness. Um, some let me know is what most regulations are after the fact. This they should scan the environment expand the scope of their search and review and come up with proactive, very proactive regulation. Um, secondly, there should be new ways of regulating banks' performance and viability. The viability ratio of banks are not the same. So there is nothing like one size fits all. 
one size never fits all. So just as we have the banks that are tiered, even for CBN regulation and for monitoring and reviews, they tier the banks. We have regulatory capital that has also tiered the banks. We have capital adequacy ratio that is tiered based on the significant nature of the banks. So I, uh, my advocate here would be that one size never fits all. So the regulators will also be required to provide guidance through policies that take into consideration the new normal. They should provide forbearances and concession where required that can cushion the pandemic effect and create policies that would promote or enhance banks' ability to lend, especially to the real sector of the economy, just like they're doing. More of it should be done. Then certain red tapes, I would say, should be cut to hasten the turnaround time and enhance quick decision making in, in, uh, uh, at, the at the various leadership level of these uh, uh, regulators roll out guidelines on treatment of certain aspects of banking operation that actually require physical confirmation of transaction now that we're in the new normal. Some key regulatory ratios need to be adjusted, like you've just said. This is also my opinion, to enable bank absorb shocks. And what are these ratios? Liquidity ratio, cash reserves ratio, it should be adjusted and there should be continuous engagement. Then for the shareholders, the shareholders should support the board through minimum expectation of dividend in, in the short term to the medium term, so that the bank can retain substantial part of its profits and retain earnings for capital formation and to facilitate growth in subsequent years. The good news here for me is that the financial institutions that step up, that's outside the box, to meet these challenges, the pressure to perform will benefit from a brand and shareholders perspective. Shareholders should quickly also communicate and where you perceive challenges, to your bank, you should communicate it to the bank to avoid the reputational issues or damage to the financial institution, which should provide additional capital, very necessary at this point in time. The fresh capitals are welcome. Knowledgeable shareholders would start to put executives on their toe, and uh, minorities may even be more concerned and they start to demand for their rights. And I will stay here, I stay here that appointment of board NEDs will become a role that must be advertised. I mean, with defined experience, creative thinking and innovation, meaning such people will also start to demand more than they do currently. Issues like what other board members will want to say, but because of body language, when you're having AGM, they'll want to keep it back. I'll say that the virtualization of shareholders meeting will make shareholders demand more as physical pretense tend to allow them to forgive or overlook some very needful action. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moye. That was wonderful. We are the last lap now, and we have two questions. And somehow, somehow, we've all answered most of these questions. I'll just read them for reading's sake. The first question came from uh, Mrs. Onari Du. She said, Excellent presentations. Thank you, madam. How far should banks go in providing and enhancing the recovery of their SME customers in terms of business linkages and internet support? Extending digital platform. Access to software as some SMEs may not be able to carry the cost of building a website that will enable online payment, but they can leverage on platforms from their banks. Thank you for that question, Mrs. Sonari. Then we have another question from Mr. Patrick Akinwutan. He said, Mrs. Oetunji made fundamental points on communication, risk management, and regulatory environment, and the support needed in this type of setting. Bank directors could be more active in advocacy on the regulatory environment. They should also advocate more collaboration and the use of shared platforms. <laughs> that addresses Ms. Onari's question in the industry to reduce industry costs strategically, both for the banks and the customers. Why can't bank branches become a shared facility rather than each bank with their own branches and it should always be more expensive to do in-branch transactions than digital, to push digital adoption? This is time for first principle thinking. Thank you very much. Thank you for these comments. Most of them have actually been <laughs> responded to. 
And then we have in the same, okay, Mizunari posted in both comments and chats. And then we have the board of banks must ensure from somebody, the board of banks must ensure that BCP <laughs> is a two-way yeah, banks credit, yeah, credit is a two-way process approach. Not only should it be a document detailing the management expectation from the employees, rather employees' expectations during this crucial time must be met because at the end of the day, they are the ones at the front line. That's from our regulator in the house. And in all our conversations, the role of the employee. I wish to congratulate nobody, Mrs. Akonji said, I wish to congratulate Bida. I guess that works well for us as a wrap up for this webinar. And thank you, Dr. Newman. Thank you, ma'am, for very effective moderation of the whole process. I give a big applause to Bida, and I'm the one that added Bida. So now we are on the final lap. Thank you very much to all our participants for your wonderful comments, your chats. We trust that even though it's a virtual process, we've made it as interactive as possible with your voices heard. Now, as we get to the last lap, I'll ask our panelists to give us one minute. If you have any one word you want directors to take away, apart from the verbs, uh, the, the, new, <laughs> the, new, the new words we have all learned in the, in the midst of this pandemic. Some of us have learned things like lockdown, social distancing, we've learned even, I even learned another one, verbal autopsy, you know, and all those kind of things. One sentence, um, one minute comment for directors to take away as you wrap up this session from each panel. After that, I would uh, invite Madam President for our closing remarks. Okay, do I kick off, Lucy? Yes, in the order. Sorry for that. Since this, order, a since this is a commercial break. Huh? <laughs> My last comment to participants is please build scenarios of possible, plausible futures and have a top line strategic plan for each scenario. Track trends and driving forces to anticipate the scenario that is likely to play out. Re-evaluate your business model. Don't just think outside the box. Please throw the box away. Strategic partnerships, even with competitors, will be critical. Agility and resilience should be part of your DNA. And finally, innovate, grow, or die. Thank you very much. That's a strong one. Thank you. Innovate, grow, or die. <laughs> Good ending word. We will use that quote from Prof in one of our magazines of Bida. Mrs. Oetuji. Yes, I have talked about oversight, but I will just enjoin directors again that they should take their oversight responsibilities very seriously. It's no more the time to go into board meetings and come out not really participating. Uh, directors should make their voices heard, even if their ideas are not used, but the whole point is bringing as many ideas as possible to the table. Second, communication, 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 both ways, from executives to non-executives, from non-executives to executives. Risk assessment should now take the peripheral risks into global and peripheral risks into the books. We should demand that of our CROs, that they look very wide um, at the risks. Uh, regulatory engagement, I cannot underscore that even uh, more than I have already. Finally, I would like to use Winston Churchill's quote that says, never waste the opportunity of a good crisis. There is no point having been through a crisis if you don't take a lot out of it. So I'm saying even in this crisis, there will be opportunities if we look to it and we can use those opportunities. I also think this is an opportunity for banks to restructure their business, their business structures and cost structure. This is the opportunity for banks to know that it's not business as usual, and going forward, the structures have to be lean and nimble and be able to uh, give value to uh, stakeholders. As you talk about investors, they are looking for value. So you, we need to bring that to the top of our minds on boards and management. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Oetunji. Dr. Moye, what Thank will you. be your comment? <laughs> Thank you, um, moderator. Um, I'll say here that 
the board is to create the right culture for uh, the new business model. An execution of this model must be by adhering to the right business practices, ethics, and principles. It's time to take the tough choices from people to safety to digital innovation. It should compose itself properly in a very appropriate manner of balance of expertise, knowledge, and experience that is needed to lead, especially during the pandemic. The board should review the company's overall situation afterwards. They should discuss lessons learned, including how the business was disrupted and how to minimize business and governance exposure in the case of future occurrences because it, it will occur again. They should focus on few impactful areas at this point in time. And lastly, I would say, the word for now is to review your strategies. The new normal is to prepare for the next disruption. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Moye. I will now want to read one last comment from uh, Mr. Samuel Durojai, who said, congratulations, Bidan, for a successful virtual presentation. Um, Mrs. Faluke Abdurazak, our former, our past vice president, says, congratulations to Bidan. Well done, Lucy. Brilliant panelists. Very informative. So on this note, we hope that we have actually added value. And for me, it has actually been wonderful hanging out with special people, having these very important discussions. And we hope that through these conversations, Bidan has actually given us an agenda for our next board meetings to say this is what we took over from uh, Bidan. On behalf of the panelists and myself, we'd like to say thank you very much. And on this note, I would like to call our able president, Mrs. Um, Demuren, to give us a closing remark. Ms. Demuren is the president of Bidan and also the chairman of the board of Guarantee Trust Bank, PLC. Thank you. Wow, it's been a very, very enlightening session. And um, the response, the comments from the participants will no doubt help us to improve on the next webinar we have. Because it's what has brought us here is because of the pandemic. And we just thought to ourselves, we can't just sit, we have meetings, we have conferences. Let's try a webinar. And this being the first, um, well, mod modest, I'll be modest about it. I think it's successful, but we can do better. That we, we welcome all the participants. We thank them for all the directors for all their comments and suggestions. Um, take, going home, I know we've taken a lot of lessons. Uh, communication, communication, communication. Proactiveness. I hear resilience. Um, use of shared facilities, because we also need to manage our costs. Whether we want to uh, accept it or not, this pandemic is going to make certain things more cost, very, very expensive more. As cost effectiveness and also additional cost to running our, our banks. Um, first, we're told to continuously review our strategy. Yes, we can have a plan. Doesn't mean that because we don't have a budget for one year, we can look at it continually. If it's quite the way it is now, people were suggested that the way it is, quarterly meetings, how feasible are they going to be in the new normal? Is it quarterly? I think Chief Obichi talked about that. Well, let's forget about whether it's going to be expensive. Forget about that because we're giving back. We also need to, we want this organization to, to, to succeed. Sometimes it's not everything. Money is important, but it's not everything. So I think the, the directors, uh, executives and non-executives, we consider that because they want the organization to succeed. At the end of the day, when organizations are being counted, they want there to be among. And the issue of, um, this is the time to look at ME. We can look at it, measures and acquisition. Yeah, people, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, that's why we have this multinational organization so huge. 
over the time, the the boss acceded to mergers and acquisition. And uh, so that at the end of the day, we have right business practices. Uh, for banking, compliance is very important. Because if you think we can do something not in line with the regulators or, or, or guidelines, we pay for it daily. So do things right. Very well. We heard that also. And um, uh, for other than the comments, I really want to thank thank all of you, the participants, for coming in. Because if we stayed here and we didn't have you register, then it would be useless. We'd just be talking to ourselves. And mm -hmm. also the, pan the panelists, Professor Bichi, thank you very much. Mrs. Soyetunji, of course, your VP, you are part of it. Uh, Jude, you are part of Bidan. We are all part. We are all Bidan, either graduate or past <laughs> professor who used to be there. And uh, of course, I'm a great. I want to thank you very much, uh, Dr. Moya. You are still there. You are still the current. You are still practicing. <laughs> so you, the link is very important. <laughs> and um, I thank all of you, and uh, I expect the directors to respond. We need you to come to Bidan House. Pop in any time if you have suggestions. We, it's a place we acquired. It's us. It's not rented. And we have an, a, an, a, a, a secretary, a secretary, a secretary, who is there, Kola. She has a, she should be there all the time. So if you need, and she has phone numbers and information, please respond. We need you to support your own. Be done. I thank you very much. I'm pleased. We'll be expecting you to respond. Tomorrow we also have a webinar for personal assistance and um, executive, um, executive, uh, yes of our directors uh, will have a good response so that they will know how to serve the directors better. Uh, that's tomorrow. And with this, since this has succeeded, we are, I'm sure we're going to try some of those courses we thought we would be to have physically and see how it plays out. On um, behalf of the members of the Governing Council, those who were here and those who are not even here, the St. Apologies, I want to thank every one of us for being part of this webinar. Uh, Mrs. Alconji, nice to hear you, though I'm not seeing you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, take care and have a blessed day. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank bye. you. And bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you.